Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Lion's Table. Let's take a moment to enter into the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let God's word, which is truth, fill us and give us strength. Let us contemplate his great love for us, his sacrifice on the cross, his mercy, grace, and promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He was the word who was at the beginning, was with God, and is God. Walk in freedom. Walk according to the Spirit, not the flesh. The term Pentecost comes from the Greek meaning 50th, and it refers to the Jewish festival of Shavuot, celebrated on the 50th day after Passover. It is also known as the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of 50 Days in Rabbinic Tradition. Now, does this mean that the that it is only a Jewish uh, 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 celebration? Uh, it, yes, it was. But when Christ sent the Holy Spirit to the disciples, he created something brand new, a new uh, covenant with mankind where the Spirit of the Lord would dwell within us. And so something brand new was born, a, uh, a situation where man now had God, his spirit within us, living inside of us. So we didn't need to have prophets like Samuel and Nathan and Elijah to tell us what God uh, was the Holy God through the Holy Spirit was thinking. God could communicate directly to us and we could communicate directly to God through the indwelling Holy Spirit. Uh, the disciples were baptized in the Holy Spirit on that day. Just as when we're born again, we're given Holy, the baptized Holy Spirit. Now, we, won't, we don't see flaming tongues and fire because that was the first time. But whenever you accept Jesus as you believe on him, you are born again into the family and you receive the indwelling spirit. Amen. And today, folks, if you didn't know, is... Pentecost. The Holy Spirit at Pentecost. We're going to read from Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a mighty rushing wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the spirit enabled them well, there were dwelling in jerusalem god-fearing jews from every nation under heaven and when the sound rang out a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language astounded and amazed they asked are not all these men who are speaking Galeans? How is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Perithians, Medians, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phyragia, Famalia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Astounded and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? But others mocked them and said, they are drunk on new wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed the crowd. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen carefully to my words. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only the third hour of the day. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, who said in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your men, young men will see visions and old men see dr dream dreams. Even on my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, listen to this message. 
Jesus of Nazareth was a man certified by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. He was delivered up by God's set plan and foreknowledge, and you, by the hands of the lawless, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, releasing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its clutches. David says about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You fill me with joy in your presence. That's all we have for this this uh, this uh, holy day, this Pentecost Sunday, and I hope that you too have been born again and indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And how do you? How are you born again? You believe on Jesus, and you believe that the Father sent Him, and you believe what He has done for you. Yes, and folks, you know there are some churches out there that say you can't be saved if you don't speak in tongues. Now, speaking in tongues is a gift. Not everybody is going to speak in tongues. Many do, many don't. But that is not proof, it doesn't need to be proof, that you are born again. Being born again is a much deeper thing, and the evidence of it is that you learn to hear God's voice, and that you also can recognize God's word, God's voice, from that of the flesh or the enemy. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 9 says, To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by that same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in various tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues, these are all gifts given to you by the Holy Spirit indwelt in you. Some people have tongues, some people have wisdom, some people can discern spirits. We all act as different parts of the body of Christ, Amen. and not all of us do the same thing. But we all have the Holy Spirit indwelt within us. And the longer you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, the longer, the, the, the more you begin to recognize the voice of, of the Holy Spirit rather than distinguished from your own or the enemy. And that happens through maturity and through practice and through prayer and through time. But all of us have some kind of special spiritual gift that we are given when we are born again. And uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 10 says, and 11 says, all these are the work of one and the same spirit who apportions them to each one as he determines. Well, that's all we have for this uh, lines table. We hope it's been a blessing to you. As always, if you have any prayer requests, please leave them in the comments section. We'll always pray for you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those behind. Uh, thank you for blessing us with listening. We hope this has been a blessing to you. And as always, we invite you to join us again next time.